Hi folks, Gord Pizer here, and if you watched uh, the, one of the last blogs that I put up on Outdoor Canada, you saw my grandson Liam and I, and we were snaring snowshoe rabbits, snowshoe hare, and I brought one, and if you, if you watched the video, if you didn't, go back and watch it, but if you did, we showed you how to snare uh, the rabbits, and at the end of that uh, uh, blog, that video blog, I put a challenge out and I challenged my good friend Cameron here, Cameron Tate, who's the food editor, the new food editor with Outdoor Canada magazine. I challenged Cameron to come up with a, a recipe and show us how to cook this. Now, rabbit is one of our favorite meals. Um, we cook it cacciatore style, which actually is uh, Italian for the hunter's rabbit. Rabbit cacciatore is a traditional uh, dish. but. I have tasted so many of this guy's recipes that are out of this world. And so the challenge was, Cameron, you come up with a recipe to cook this snowshoe hare. And with that little intro, it's all over to you. Okay. <laughs> so, the, you know, it was interesting, you know, when I heard that you did a cacciatore. Um, I love Italian-influenced uh, food with rabbit. And I was going to do a, a rabbit paella. But I, I didn't want to do uh, two Italian things. So um, the challenge was really interesting because, you know, the meat is not tough. You know, it is a, a very well exercised animal, but it's a young animal. So there's a lot of different things that you can do uh, with it. The other thing, though, can I interrupt? Sure. Is there's no fat. It's no. like the boar we were talking about. What amazes me, Cameron, when we skimmed it, and this is, you know, we've skimmed it and just uh, prepared it here. There's no fat whatsoever, middle of winter in 30 below, and so the, the insulation's got to be all the fur, it's not in the meat. That's right. And, and the funny thing is, is the only reason why we're doing this today on a Saturday is because it's minus 40 out, and <laughs> I don't want to go ice fishing when it's minus 40, so this is a really great day to, to do right. this. Um, with this dish, you know, coming from, you know, my kind of background as a chef, I'm looking to bounce flavors off of everything. So this is what's really interesting when you research a, a dish and this is what gives it depth. Uh, and that's what I say. I always want a minimum of three flavor profiles in any dish. And we've talked about that before and all the things that I've done. So the, the main thing is uh, in the body to many kind of dishes is just a simple onion. It could be a yellow onion, a white onion, a cipollini onion, it could be pearl onions. But that's what we're going to do. We're going to slowly caramelize this, and it's almost like an onion soup. You know, when you get a really great onion soup, if the, the, the chef is patient, you're going to sweat this down and get all that uh, caramelization. Now you've got a really good base for the dish. Then what we're going to do is we're going to add mushrooms, mushrooms, rabbit, onions. It, it wow. works. Yeah. And then, so we got two flavor profiles. Now let's pull in a little bit of um, a cognac. What goes good with cognac? Cognac. Apricots, it goes really well. Now you're, you're looking for um, a mustard. It goes so good with rabbit. But mustard, lemon, cognac, and then we're going to have a little bit of cream and a little bit of chicken stock to give this a well-rounded dish. So it's a braised we're going to very lightly, we're going to season it, we're going to lightly sear it. We don't want it too uh, golden brown because it's a light, sort of a, a cream-based sauce. And this is a classic dish uh, of what is, is um, quite, quite common. And the other thing, though, that I like, uh, every time I watch you cook things, uh, we tend to have most of the recipes, like lists and lists of ingredients. Yeah. But you keep everything... And this is amazing, honest truth. Uh, everything is simple ingredients that almost everybody has in the house. That's right. But it winds up tasting unlike anything we ever cook. And I think it's because of that balancing. Eh? Yeah. Well, now the pressure is on me to make sure that it, it does taste good. And I'm going to walk out of this video and let you do the rest. Great. <laughs> so another really great thing uh, with rabbit is uh, pine nuts. So that's sort of like a, a normal sort of flavor. So you get pine needles, pine nuts, and what they normally eat. So uh, the, the trick with a lot of dishes is pair the things of what they would normally eat and uh, to graze on. Um, 
I don't need to marinate this one at all. It's a matter of, of taking a, a knife. I, I actually just got this knife. It's called a Camulus knife. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, it is a titanium knife and I can take this and I could cut right through the bones uh, quite easily. The joints on, on these sort of uh, animals, they're really tight and they have such a, a hard muscle structure, but this uh, titanium knife is going to cut through them uh, no problem. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to just lightly sear this um, where it's going to be a cream based and we're going to have it with a, a really nice egg pasta, a pappardelle, and it's going to be a really great rustic flavored dish on a really, really cold winter day. And um, we're going to have this for lunch and it's going to be fantastic. Okay, so I thought I'd just show you a couple things on how to do this, you know, fr from, a, from a professional point of view, but you can very easily do this at home. So I've got the, the rabbit here and what I've done is I've just very lightly browned it. Um, because it's a white stew, we don't want to brown it too much because it'll make the stew uh, look too off colored. So I sear it, I put it on the side here, and now I started these onions. The trick is with these onions, we don't want them to burn. So we're just going to add a little bit of water. And now that's going to bring up all the little bits and pieces off the bottom. But slowly cook your onions and get all that flavor. You will be amazed on how different this will taste when you slowly caramelize and bring out all those natural sugars. The one thing with this dish here with the rabbit, what I like to do is pair it with a little bit of lemon. And we've got a honey ginger white balsamic. So we've got an acid, a couple acids here. It'll help cut sort of like the gamey taste uh, of the rabbit. And then after I'm going to add in my mushrooms, saute that, get those really nice and soft. And then I'm going to have some of this cognac and cognac and cream and lemons and rabbit. It is a perfect marriage. So right now, just to show you again, is burning or cooking a little bit too much on the bottom. Just a splash of water. And I'm stirring it off the bottom. And actually, look at that. That is all ready to go. So if you take a look at it here, it's a really nice caramelized, it's not too brown, but I tell you, it's like an onion soup. When you cook onions really nice and slow for a really nice rich onion soup, uh, it gives it depth and flavor and that natural sweetness from the onion. So at this stage here, I'm gonna add in my mushrooms. And I haven't seasoned anything at this point here. So I'm gonna add a little bit of kosher salt and some black pepper for my fancy pepper mill here. And I might have to add in a little bit of butter or olive oil at this stage here because mushrooms, they absorb so much liquid. Just a little bit. Once I have all this sauteed and I add in my cognac and my mustard and my acid like the, the lemon, I'm going to add in a little bit of um, the mustard and the cream and the rabbit and then it's going to slowly simmer and um, it'll be great. Okay, now my favorite part here is when we're going to flambe. Similar to what you do or what you would see at a fine dining restaurant. We've got our pan just singing here and we got lots of heat in there. So if you're doing this on a gas stove, all you have to do is pour it in. Bring your alcohol away from it. That's very important. Pour it in and then put it back over the flame. Because we're cooking on an electric stove here, I'm going to show you how you're going to do it. And I like a nice big flame here. So go like this, bring it over, and then there we go. You're going to cook off all the alcohol. Now the rabbit and the cream and everything is all good to go. Okay, here we are. We're right at the end of this dish uh, before we're going to cover it up. So uh, what I've done is I've added some chicken stock in there, a little bit of cream, just a touch to give it some body. And I've added in a little bit of lemon juice. I've actually checked the seasoning. 
because if your seasoning at this point here is really bland, uh, you're going to have a bland meat product. So season it all uh, how it should be at this moment. Um, I always have chicken stock and beef stock on hand in the freezer at all times. I even reduce my beef stock actually in little ice cube trays. And when I want a really nice rich stock, I'll just drop one of those uh, frozen cubes in there, sort of like one of those uh, dried ones. And then all I do now is I take a lid, nice tight fitting lid, and I put it on low. This one here, we're going to cook it for around 30 minutes. And the main thing is, is that the, the rabbit will be tender, so you can actually just pull it off with a fork. And we'll reduce the sauce just a touch to give it some body, and it's ready to go. All right, now we're taking this to the plate, and I'm uh, really excited because I've welcomed uh, Gord and his lovely wife, Lynn, in here into our house, and we're going to have a really great supper. So um, we've done uh, a bunch of different dishes here, and... It's about balancing a whole bunch of things. But anyways, what I've done is this bison short rib, and I've got this from Black Angus Meats in Toronto, and uh, Gord actually brought this for me to try today. And we've got this, and we've got a parsnip mash with some toasted pine nuts, uh, a carrot ginger puree, which is gonna go really great with the bison. Uh, we've got some buttered uh, egg noodles that uh, Papardell we're gonna have. We're not going to go uh, hungry today, that's for sure. No. And the, the dish that hopefully everyone's been waiting for, uh, and Gord, is this, it's like a fricassee, so a, a rabbit fricassee with apricots, brandy, uh, we've got some onions, mushrooms, uh, some toasted pine nuts, and Gord's going to try it now. That's a pressure on me. Ooh. <laughs> now here, here's the real taste test. Ooh, this is so warm. Ooh, that's amazingly good. <laughs> it truly, truly is. Wow. On the first blog, I said if you don't go out and, and snare rabbits, you don't know what you're missing. But if you don't cook them this way, you won't know what you're missing. Absolutely fabulous, Cam. Great. So we're going to take our noodles, and we're going to have our rabbit. We're going to pour it over top of here. And we're going to have a little bit of a, a feast, uh, wow. I, I think. And uh, thank you so much for coming to our home uh, today. And he's, he's thanking me. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I, I think that we're going to uh, enjoy ourselves. Finger licking good. Good.